Welcome back to the Garden of English. I'm Tim Freitas and I'm happy to have you here. Okay, you're feeling good because drawing little lines at areas that seem to transition is pretty easy. But now we have another problem. Just noting those lines isn't going to answer the multiple choice questions on its own. We have to write some quick abbreviations as well in order to do this right. So today it's time to complete step two of annotating nonfiction. To keep things consistent, we're gonna to continue to work with the excerpt from He Showed Us the Way by Cesar Chavez. If you missed the first video in the series, you can check it out in the description, but it's okay if you watch it after you finish this one. In order to get into step two of rhetorical annotations, you are gonna to need to know these things called methods of development. Basically, what these are are ways to categorize human thought patterns. Anytime you think, speak, write, or communicate, your words will fit into one of these multiple categories that I'm about to tell you. And these are listed in no specific order. The first method of development is description. And when you're trying to identify what part of the text models this thought pattern, you're going to want to look for language that appeals to the senses. The second method of development is narration. And when you're looking for things that involve this, you're going to want to see if there are any plot elements in the text itself. So, if you see some characters, some conflicts, some resolutions, if there's any type of story being told, we're gonna call that narration. Third on our list is exemplification. And what we're looking for is the writer to provide some evidence. That's it. We're looking at the text and we're saying, hey, is there evidence that's supporting a claim, whether it's explicit or implicit from the author? Cause and effect is another method of development. And here, you're trying to identify any instigating moments or consequences that are tied to those instigating moments that are discussed throughout the piece. We have a more specific type of cause and effect as well. And this one's actually called problem solution. So if you see a problem, if you see a solution offered, yeah, that's what we're trying to find. There's also compare and contrast. Text that fits into this category is produced in a method that highlights either the similarities or the differences or maybe both between multiple things. The most common way you'll see this is when the author creates an us versus them scenario. Process analysis also shows up in text. Text produced in this method explains how something is done. Last but not least, we've got the final method of development, which is definition. And this is where a common meaning is established. Now this could be the common meaning of a word that's foundational to your piece or the principles that are foundational to the argument that you're about to produce. Okay, so now that you know the characteristics of these methods of development, what should you actually do with them? First, you need to turn them into simple abbreviations. I'm gonna give you a little key about how I abbreviate them. You can check it out right here. Having these abbreviations allows us to complete step two. Although it's not as easy as step one, apes can still do it. The problem is though, that different areas of text can overlap, different methods of development. So you are gonna have to make some executive decisions while you annotate. Here's what you do. While you read, after you've marked the transitions for the piece, you're gonna wanna label down the left-hand side of the page, the methods of development that you see show up as you look at the different chunks of text. Let's check it out. I'm gonna model it for the first two sections of this essay that we've been looking at. Take a look at my first section. It contains exemplification when Chavez mentions Martin Luther King Jr. and compares his legacy of the civil rights movement with his farm workers movement. Chavez also highlights that the cause of his writing for this article is the death of Martin Luther King Jr. So there's cause and effect as well. You may be asking, so what do I mark? Exemplification, comparison, cause and effect? But the truth is you may and should mark the ones that are most prevalent and meaningful, even if multiple exist. In this case, the methods that stand out most would be exemplification and comparison. If you had to choose one, comparison would be best because Chavez wants all the positivity that's associated with Martin Luther King Jr. to be added to and compared to his work with the farm workers movement. If you're concerned about how methods of development overlap, you might need to expand your mind. English isn't like singular boxes where everything fits together. It's like nesting dolls. It can be one doll, it can be many, and we're gonna have to be okay with that. Let's go to section two. Notice the word is. This is an excellent indicator that a definition is gonna be provided. In fact, this is the prevalent method of development for this particular section. Here, Chavez defines the principles and convictions of the movement, specifically that nonviolence is the supreme course of action when dealing with civil protest. Now, I could go on giving you all the answers, but that's not gonna help you much. You really need to actually try this out. Here, you'll wanna pause the video, click on that link to the Chavez excerpt found in the description, read the piece, try to identify at least one to three methods of development that characterize the language in the sections that you've made. Don't forget, look for the predominant ones. I hope you paused the video and tried this, but maybe you didn't. Either way, I'm sure you guessed that I included the completed version right down in the description. So at least try this with anything else you're reading or viewing or any conversation that you have because all of our thoughts fit into these processes. I wanna leave you with one final tip. Knowing the methods of development will not only help you read critically and do better on your multiple choice, 
but it will also make writing the rhetorical analysis essay a million times easier, especially when you have to identify verbs for rhetorical choices. We actually have a poster that helps with that too. You can check it out. It looks like this. That's also in the description. You've just completed the second step in rhetorically annotating. So we started by drawing lines. Now we're writing a couple letters down the side. It's still pretty easy. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything new from the Garden of English. Also, if you want to know how to finish the job when it comes to annotating, check out this video.